Hey guys, let me help you out with your first SAM assignment. Today you're going to be creating a Word flyer, but let me show you where all the pieces and parts are. I've logged into Canvas and connected into MindTap, and under the Welcome to your ITE 115 course, you will find the student data files that you'll need if you need them for any of the examples. Let's next go down to Word Module 1. There is an online textbook. I can see it by clicking on Word Module 1. And I think it's always a great idea as you go through the video to also open your online textbook so that you can see the steps that I'm going through. So for example, the very first module, you're going to be creating this flyer right here. And it's really good for you to be able to look at this. And then as I go through the steps, what would be great is I will say what we're going to do first is, and we're going to talk about the word window and to display a ribbon, all these pieces and parts. And then I'll start following the steps that are in this textbook. So in a little bit, I'm going to tell you to wash your hands. Boy, this was made before COVID, so that's kind of odd. Exclamation point as the headline. But by looking at it in the book as well, you'll be able to see what is everything called? Where is she doing this? Um, so have the book open as we go. In addition to that, let me close up the book. Some other great things here that are an awesome resource beside this video that you're watching is there are some practice videos and these show some of the most challenging things in the chapter. So I would definitely go through these. These also make a great way to review. So for example, if you miss something in SAM, you could go back. When you want to start working in a document that does not contain any content, create a new blank document. So you could go through these and they're based on the different tasks that we're learning. So let's say in Sam, you miss this week how to do something that's a little challenging. Uh, let's say uh, you're having trouble with the theme colors. You could watch this video. There are 56 of them on how to do this. So you feel a little more confident about doing a perfect job uh, Change with the this. theme colors to apply a different set of colors to elements such as head Okay, and these are the two assignments that you will turn in. One is the SAM textbook project, and one is the Word SAM project B. Each of these you can turn in twice because it'll give you an instant SAM report in your gradebook right here, and you'll be able to see what you missed, go back and fix it. Here is my best word of advice, believe SAM. Uh, I always get students who email me and say, Sam is wrong. I will always go look and explain to you that Sam isn't wrong and show you your error that Sam just showed you. It would be a lot quicker if you would just believe Sam. Sam is 100% right because it's just a technology program that's checking to see if you did that step correctly. And I've never seen it make a mistake. So just read through, go back through the videos and see the error that you made. Hey, next, let's start our first uh, textbook project. So to get started on my first assignment, I'm going to click here on Word Module 1 SAM Textbook Project. And the reason I have to do that is to make sure that I always use the SAM starter file. So I'm going to click Start right here. And this has the reading like I was showing you the textbook, another way to get to that same textbook to go step by step. This is your start file, and these are any images or support files that you might need. So go ahead and open up your textbook so you can go step by step through the project as I direct. And then also open your starter file. So when I open the starter file, I can click down at the bottom on open file and enable. Now you'll notice when you look at this, you'll be like, well, why are we opening a blank document? Encrypted in this is your name and your personal information. And notice it now has the name of the file with your name up here. 
That way we'll know that you did the original assignment from scratch. And an important point right now, make sure you never copy and paste any text that you type in originally. If you do copy and paste, Sam won't let you turn it in. So it has to be all of your work and it has to be typed in originally. Sorry about that. So here we go. Um, I'm going to make sure I log into my cloud account that you guys created in your first week of assignments. You went to, um, to the outlook.com or to, uh, to create your email address there. So I'm going to make sure I'm logged into that so I can save automatically. So I can go to File, Save As, go to my OneDrive to save what I am doing as I go along, and it will automatically save up here. Now you can also save locally to your computer to turn it in. We'll do that at the end. So let me first show you around the Word window that you need to understand. This area at the top is called the ribbon, and the ribbon is where all of your tools are. And the ribbon can hide on you. Look where my mouse is over here on the far right. If you click right there, the ribbon kind of hides. And then if you click uh, back in that same space, um, you can get that ribbon to open back up for you with that little arrow or double click on any of these tabs. When I go to tell you where to do something in Word, you'll click on the Home tab, or let's say the Insert tab. That's what these top row is called. And I might say go to the Insert tab, go to the Illustrations group. The bottom of the ribbon is called a group. And then the tool, for example, maybe click on picture to add a picture. So in this ribbon, we can select any of the tools. Some of the tools don't pop up until you're in it. For example, let's say I add a picture it will then switch the ribbon. Let me show you. If I were to pick a picture, for example, from online pictures, I could go pick a picture right now, let's say an apple, put it in here, and look, I now have a new tab at the top that deals with picture format. We call this a contextual tab because it shows up when I'm working on the ribbon and in context. Let me delete that. So one of the first things we're going to do to get started here is we want to make sure that you have adjusted your margins for the flyer. So to do that, your first thing you're going to do is click on the Layout tab at the top of Microsoft Word. And we're going to click this very first tool in the Page Setup group called Margins. It turns out I want a lot of space to make my good looking flyer here about washing your hands. So right now it's set to normal, which means one inch on top, left, bottom, right of the sheet of paper. But I want more space than that, so I'm gonna make it narrow. So it's gonna be a half inch at the top, half inch left, bottom and right. So everyone click narrow, first step, ready to roll. Hey, next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to begin to type our text and what we want to do when we type our text is I want to type in capital W and notice how high we are up wash your hands now and put an exclamation point at the end that's called a headline that's going to be at the top of your flyer I'm going to go ahead and make my screen by coming down the bottom right a little bit larger you can leave yours at 100%, but I'm trying to allow you to make it easier for you guys to see. So I have wash your hands right there, and now I'm gonna press the Enter key to move my insertion point to the next line. Notice this big gap in between? That's because Microsoft Word by default puts a big space between different paragraphs. Next, I wanna change my page width a little bit. So I can go up to the View tab, and I can come to the Zoom group and change my page width right here. And by changing my page width, I can make sure that my page is as large as it is right now. So that's good. So click Page Width. That makes the whole page fill up your screen so you can see a little bit easier. 
And the next thing we're going to do is display formatting marks. And you should be following along the book right now so you can read and hear me as well. So hey, now let's go to the Home tab. Let me explain these formatting marks. It makes it a lot easier when you're creating a document to see where you've skipped blank spaces, where you've put extra spaces, where you've skipped lines. So to do that, we're always going to turn this on in Word. It's under the Home tab in the Paragraph group. Hit this backwards P. Notice it says Show, Hide. This is called IntelliSense to kind of tell you what this tool does. It shows paragraph marks and other hidden formatting. Now notice when I click it, I now have one to say that I've ended the paragraph right there and started a new fresh paragraph right there. Notice between wash your hands, there's a little dot to show there's one single space to make sure we did things properly. So next, we're going to type in the sentence, and don't forget, do not copy and paste it, or it's not going to work later when you go to turn it in. So type in washing your hands with soap and water can decrease outbreaks of foodborne illness because it can prevent spreading germs from your hands to food. And feel free to stop this video at any time and kind of catch up and then keep on going. I want to explain what just happened. It, it's something called word wrap. It means it couldn't fit the rest of this after spreading, so it automatically went down to the next line. For example, if yours didn't space like that, you probably don't have the margins turned on. So go back in the video and make sure your margins are right. So you don't have to watch me type. I just typed in all the text through figure 1-34. So now I have it all typed in. Microsoft thinks it's faster to first type in and then apply formatting. And you say, well, what will it look like? Well, if you've looked in the book, it'll look like this. So let's get started on our formatting. So first thing we're going to do is change the document theme. And to do that, we can do so by going to under the design tab to themes. But before before we change that theme, let me show you something that's pretty important here. Uh, the theme that it starts out with is called the office theme. If I were to go under home and look at the color, these are the standard colors. Think blue, orange, gray, gold, blue and green. But a lot of companies want a good theme. Think of like Target in Lynchburg or Target, right? It's got the color red, the bullseye, the block font. That all is called a theme or their design. So now when I go under design and click themes, I can roll my mouse and look at different themes. The one I ultimately am going to pick is scroll down a little bit till you find Slate. Slate is more than a different font. It actually, look at the colors on that little tab. It has like rust and golds and browns and grays. So now when I pick the theme, not only when I go to the home tab has my font change from the initial Calibri size 11 to Callisto. When I go to the colors, oh my goodness, all the colors have changed entirely. So a theme does a lot to your document. Now next, let's select our headline. Wash your hands, exclamation point is that headline. What I'm going to do to select it is triple click. So take your mouse and tap three times, one, two, three. It'll highlight that whole first line, headline, or paragraph. What I want to do to that is center it. Center is located under the Home tab, Paragraph, the second set of lines. There we go. And I'll do the same to the second paragraph. Let me triple click. One, two, three. Everything's selected. Come up here and click Center as well. What else are we going to do? Well, I want you now to go back and select the headline, one, two, three. And now we can, uh, right now it's size 11, that's way too small. Let me click the down arrow for font size and change it to 36. Now we can kind of see that. I also want to change the name of the font from Callisto to something called Rockwell Extra Bold. And you'll be glad to know these are in alphabetical order. 
So as we get down to the R's for Rockwell, extra bold, you can pick that one. Boy, that really stands out. And I don't want it to be the sentence case of a capital W, capital Y, and a capital H. I want it all uppercase. Don't retype it. Instead, we're going to try to use this tool under the Home tab and font called Change Case. And I'm going to switch it to uppercase. And make sure you use this tool. For example, Sam, the grading engine, would mark that wrong if you typed it all in caps. You have to follow the directions that are given. Hey, what else? I want to show you something pretty cool. It's this tool right here. This is called Text Effects in Topography. We're going to apply a preset text effect to the selected text. And when I scroll around, do you see I have all these cool ones? We're going to go with this one, second line, fourth one over. Look at the whole uh, little text there. Fill, white, outline, brown, accent color one, glow, brown, accent color one. Please understand that's just one click, not like five different settings. So now that I've got that there, let's go ahead and shade that headline. What shade means, it's this paint bucket in the paragraph grouping under the Home tab. If I hit this down arrow right here, I get the same colors from my theme. I'm going to select this color right here. It's called Brown Accent 4, darker 25%. Make sure you select that one exactly, or yeah, the same grade engine will mark that wrong too. So be super careful. And what else? I now want to go down and select the second paragraph by triple clicking. There we go. And what I want to do now is change the font size. Well, first the color. I'm going to drop down the font color, not the background, the font. That's the big letter A here. And I'm going to pick this darker red accent 5, darker 25%. I'm also going to change the font size to size 22. That looks good. Now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and now select all the lines from how all the way down to after handling, handling dirty equipment or garbage. Let go. We're not highlighting that last line. So from how all the way down, what we want to do here is change the font, in this case, to size 20. Looks good. And I'm going to highlight now from wet hands through dry hands all the way to this last period. I want this to be numbered one through five, like five how points. So I'll click on this one, two, three for numbering. It's in the paragraph grouping. And voila, one, two, three, four, five. I can also, as I go down through here, Let's go ahead and apply a list of bullets. I'm going to do it for the whens from before to garbage. And bullets are a dot in front of something to kind of uh, really describe when to wash your hands in a bulleted list. So I'm going to click right here under the Home tab paragraph group on bullets. And now this is really coming along. Hey, next, head to figure 1-64 in the book, and notice this is hyperlinked. So that means it would be great in an online document to open that web page, but I don't want it to be a hyperlink. So I'm going to right-click on this and select about halfway down, remove hyperlink. So now when I click on it, it won't open to that page. Okay, let's click somewhere in the very last line. The last line of uh, an item is called the signature line. So this line, visit www.foodworkers.com, is called our signature line. And let's go ahead and hit center just to get that centered. And let's change the text. We can uh, click three times in front, one, two, three. And this is called a mini toolbar. We could be using this as well. Uh, it's the same as the ribbon, it's just a little bit closer sometimes. Let's just change this to size 18 using that little mini toolbar right there. I also want to change the font color, so I'm going to drop that little mini toolbar down and change it to that same red that we used on the second paragraph, red accent 5, darker 25%. 
Now, I'm going to uh, highlight the words additional hand washing tips, not the period. Be careful. Additional hand washing tips. And now that I have that selected, I'm going to come up and click underline the U in the Home tab font grouping to get that underlined as well. I'm also going to italicize some text. Let me find this word prevent, just the word prevent, nothing extra. Let's go ahead and hit italicize. It's the slanted eye in the font group. And let's go ahead and select the word wet. It's in number one under how. What I'm going to do with all of those is I want the first word of all those five bullets. I want them to be in bold. Well, I don't want to do it separately. If I hold down the control key and then highlight lather, scrub, rinse, and dry, and then let go of the control key, I can highlight them all at once. Let me now, after I've selected all five, click B for bolding those text. So that's a quick way to select non-adjacent text. Woo! Okay, coming along great. So when I click back, I can see this support file. I'm about to put this image in my document, but let me show you how to download it. Just click on the support file. It'll just get downloaded. It usually on a PC gets downloaded to your um, folder right down here. You may see it's up to which browser you're using. This usually goes in your download folder. So don't, you don't need to open it, but I will just show it to you real quick. Here's what you just downloaded. So it's someone washing their hands. Let me show you how to put it in your document. So I'm going to open the document back up. I'm going to scroll down after dry hands. There's this blank line between dry and when. First of all, I'm going to center that line so the picture, once I put it in, will center as well since I click center. Now let's insert that picture. Let's go to insert pictures and we're going to go to this device and go under downloads. And there's my support WD1 washing hands. Now when I first put it in, mm, it's definitely pretty large here. So I am going to format that a little bit so I don't have such a large picture. And I want to make sure I can see the whole page. So I'm going to come down here at the bottom. There's this arrow that zoom in and zoom out. I'm going to keep hitting my minus sign down here until I can see my whole page or pages. Uh-oh. Right now this thing is so big I'm on two pages and a flyer should always be just one page. So we want to resize this object proportionally so that, you know, it doesn't look all askew. So what we can do right here is click on our sizing handles. Those are these little circles on the corners of my picture and keep resizing it until it's perfectly if that last line visit www food workers will get on this page. Oh, there we go. So now we have it scaled proportionally. So now we know it's just right. Now we want to change the picture style. Let me make this zoom, hit the plus sign down here to make it a little bit larger. Click back on that picture if you're not. Let's now apply something called a picture style. Let me show you what a picture style is. As I hover over these different picture styles, I get different looks like this circle or this square. The one I ultimately want to pick is, oh, let's find this one. I want to go with snip diagonal corner. So let's keep looking until we find snip diagonal corner and white. There we go. That's the one we want. So I'm going to click right there. And now the picture looks a lot more professional. It doesn't look just like it was plopped there in a square way. Love that. I want to do one more thing to my picture. It's still selected, so I'm going to go under Picture Effects. These are different cool like shadows and reflections and glows. I'm going to pick Reflection. And once, uh, no, I think I'll pick Shadow. I'll pick Shadow right here. And then scroll down to this very first one under Perspective. It's called Perspective Upper Left. And notice it puts this really cool shadow behind the picture which makes like look like a professional design company put it in and nothing else. 
Now let's go and enhance this page a little bit more. I've decided that the brown is just not working with wash your hands. Color means something. If you see red, it usually means passion or romance. If you see purple, it means royalty. Um, in this case, wash your hands should probably have something to do with blue, right? So what I'm gonna ultimately do is click on the design tab and I wanna change my theme, not the whole theme, but my theme color only. So I'm gonna come over here to theme colors and I'm gonna go down and if you notice as I go down, do you see the colors changing here? I'm gonna pick blue two, it looks like a Roman numeral two and look at my palette. And my palette hasn't just changed here and made it kind of a green blue everywhere. It's changed any time I go back to my colors. Do you see my new theme colors? I also want to add a page border. To do that, let me go back to design and the page borders are way over here on the right. I'm going to click page borders. I think what I'm going to pick here is this one called box. I'm going to scroll down to styles. And I'm going to pick the one, if I keep scrolling down here, this one's a little hard to find. After I get to these, the style that I want is where the dark line is on top. So this one right here. And I want to change the color of the border to this color. Let me make sure I get the right one right here. Uh, it's the fourth over. It's this one right here. Turquoise Accent 3, darker 25%. So now I have that selected. Uh, let me change the width. Make sure it is three point. It is. And the art is none. So all is happy. Let me click OK. And does everybody see my nice edging all around my flyer? Now this next item is the most missed item. So really uh, tune in. I think you're starting to see if you if you went to a Google high school, we Google is very lightweight compared to what's really used typically in business. About 89% of businesses today use Microsoft Office. So this is kind of the heavy duty tools. This is our easiest assignment. Uh, we're going to get into a lot heavier tools than flyers, of course. But let's go to how now. And I want you to triple click how to select the paragraph. We're gonna go to the layout tab because I wanna do something to change the spacing before and after paragraphs. Uh, this way the flyer spacing will look more balanced with the spacing uh, adjusted above and below the paragraphs I'm gonna fool with. So notice I'm gonna go under layout and spacing. It's in this paragraph. I want the spacing to be above this and below this at each zero. So I need to change this eight point. I could type a zero or hit these down arrows until they say zero. I don't know if you noticed it, but now it's a little bit tighter right here. It looks a little bit better. Uh, I'm now also going to change uh, the spacing in front of when. So let's triple click on when. And what I wanna do there is also make sure it's zero so it looks more balanced. So let me make sure that's zero. And as you can see, I'm still going on to my second page. So let me make sure this picture is just a tad smaller. You want to make sure that last page is showing up here because you never want a two page flyer. And then I'm going to go back to um, my very last line. I want you to go to uh, the last line this visit. So I'll triple click. And I want to make sure the spacing there is 12 and 8. So let me do the before spacing, whoops, to be 12. Make sure that's 12 and 8 above and below. If this line's not on your flyer, change the size of your picture to make sure it fits in there. Hey guys, we now want to go under something called the document properties. I want you to click on the file tab, this displays something called the backstage view. And we're going to um, come on down here. Let's go to the info tab on the left. This tells me how long you've been editing a document, all this information. I want you to go under comments right here to the right and type CIS 
101 assignment. I know that's not our class, but we're going to do the one that Sam wants us to do there. So now we all know what assignment this is. And I now want to make sure it's saved. If you have it on auto saved, you won't have to hit save again. If you don't have it on auto save, please click this little save to make sure all your changes are there. Now to close this document, we can go to the file tab and hit close. But I now want to reopen that document. And the way to do that is to reopen Word down here at the bottom. And when I go to open Word, I can now go to open and go to SCWD1, wash hands flyer formatted. And we should be able to reopen the document. So last couple things we're going to do is I want you to make just a couple little changes in the real world you will. I want you to click in front of the A and apply right after that space. We're going to put the word then right here. People edit, they proofread, they make changes. Always proofread through your document before you submit it to Sam. You may have forgotten punctuation, spelling is wrong. It will mark off. So put then space apply. Um, sometimes we even want to delete something. So let's go click back on then. We'll double click and we can now hit the delete key. Ah, I decided against the then. So you can cut it, delete it. Um, we also may want to copy and paste. Let's come down here to the word clean. Highlight the word clean, not the comma. We can come up to the ribbon under the home tab and find these two sheets of paper called copy. And let me highlight the word clean and then hit copy. I decided in front of dry hands while using a clean towel would send better. So I'm going to now paste it here, make sure there's a space between clean towel. And I can also move text. So what I'd like you to do is go down to the second sentence that has to do with before, during, and preparing, after preparing food. Let's, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this text and now click and drag it before, after eating. Now, before comes before after eating, which would make more sense if you look at the paragraphs. So by releasing the mouse, we now have. I want to show you the read mode here at the bottom. If you scroll to the very bottom of the screen, look where I'm pointing the bottom right, right down here. I can click the read mode. It just makes a little bit easier to read this document, makes it larger for people to visualize. And now I can switch it back to the print layout, which is right down here at the bottom. Uh, let's make sure you save. If you've been auto saving, it's been saving the whole time. Otherwise, it's saved. Um, before we submit it to help, I want you to go to File, Save a Copy, and save it on your PC as well with the same name. So that way you can submit that copy to the local PC. One thing, let me tell you a big secret. At the top here, this is called the tell me box. For example, if I typed in margins, it will tell me where to adjust the margins right here. So it's a really great, powerful tool to know about that tell me box. We also have a help pane. So at any point in time, we can uh, click help in the ribbon. Uh, to get a little more help right here. So different ways uh, to get a little help as you go. Guys, thank you. You Hopefully mind is blown. At this point, you would go back to Sam and now you would hit continue. You would upload that file is, and it will immediately give you a response back. So you can turn in your second attempt. You don't have to retype the whole thing. You'll just fix the errors. And believe me, believe what it has to say. Okay, guys? Uh, good luck. Let me know if I can help you as you move along. Take care, guys.